What you shooting on? The Sony 6400? Hey guys, Cindy Jiangson here. I'm missing a watch. So Sony invited me and a bunch of other YouTubers to go to an island to play with the brand new Sony A6400. I think there are about maybe 40 YouTubers going to Catalina Island, which was this small island off the coast of Southern California. There were a ton of YouTubers there, some of which you already know. There's I Justine, Jenna, Sam Sheffer, Becky and Chris, Craig Adams, Kitty, Armando, Jason Vong, Potato Jet, Cody Blue, and a whole bunch more. Leaning on a boat. Chris, drive in, punch it! <laughs> I don't know why Sony thought letting 40 YouTubers loose on an island was a, was a good idea. Okay, let's talk about the camera. I was actually surprised to find how much I really liked shooting with the Sony a6400. First of all, the form factor on the a6400 is absolutely perfect. It's small, it's compact, it's lightweight, and it's perfect for, for vloggers, especially those of you that travel. By no means at all does it replace the Sony a6500. In fact, it actually replaces the Sony a6300 and the camera models before that. Not my words, that's according to Sony. But in many, many ways, the features on the a6400 seem to surpass the features that are on the a6500. Other than the form factor, my absolute absolute favorite feature of the Sony a6400 is the real-time autofocus tracking. It is fast, like real fast. And not only is it fast, but it's actually pretty intuitive. Now, I made the mistake of not recording the screen to show you the, the focus box following the subject while tracking it, but Jason Vong and Cody Blue did videos on that, so make sure to check out their videos if you want to see that focus box in action. But Believe me, it is it is fast, it is good, and it is intuitive. Some other great features worth noting is that the Sony a6400 has the same picture profiles as the a7 III and a7 R3. That includes Cine 4, S-Log2, S-Log3, and Hybrid Log Gamma, which I absolutely love using and shot with all day on the Sony Catalina trip. All right, now we're in the right settings. We have Hybrid Log Gamma all set, so we should be looking at some pretty Awesome images straight out the camera. Color science on the a6400 is much improved. Again, similar to the a7 III and a7 R3. Low light performance is also pretty impressive up to ISO 3200, both in 4K 24 frames a second and HD 120 frames a second. It does start to get noisy above ISO 3200, but footage is still usable up to 6400. And battery life. Battery life is improved on the a6400, even though it uses the same batteries as the a6500 and a6300 have. You know, those batteries. Of course, one of the biggest gripes of the a6400 is the position of the flip-up screen in relation to the hot shoe on top of the camera. Just doesn't work. You're blocking where the external mic should be. Sony gave us these adapters that we can mount to the bottom of the camera, which then you can mount your mic onto that adapter and then connect your mic to the camera that way. That kind of worked, but also didn't work. It just, it, it felt really off balance. It just makes sense to place your mic on top of the camera so that when you're holding it, it feels balanced. I think from most of us on the trip have concluded that you just can't use a flip up screen and an external mic at the same time. It's either one or the other. Or up on screen, the screen. Take your pick. Although I will say that Sony did a very good thing by moving the mic to the front of the camera so that it's facing you as you vlog. And the audio coming from the internal mic of the a6400 is not too bad. We have the a6400 all set up. I don't have a mic on now, I'm just using the internal mic uh, on a gimbal, the Zine Weeble Lab. Uh, let's see what these guys got. Lack of IBIS on the a6400 is also pretty weird. I mean, in-body image stabilization should be standard on all cameras across the board, especially in 2019. The only reason I can think of the lack of IBIS is just production costs, which makes the camera a little bit more affordable, but still. And I can go on and on about the other frustrations I have with the a6400, but that's like with any other camera out there. Every camera is going to have some sort of limitation that you're going to be frustrated with. But that's why it's up to you, the filmmaker, the photographer, to figure out how to use this camera to create the best content.
And despite those little frustrations, I still love shooting with the A6400. I mean, the real-time autofocus tracking is worth it alone to have the camera. It's so good. I personally think it's a great backup camera, especially if I need to film myself doing something. I don't have to bring an external monitor anymore, thus reducing the amount of gear that I have to bring on a shoot. And it has the HLG picture profile, which I get to match with with my Sony a7 III. So overall, the Sony a6400, I approve. I still don't have a watch.